Welcome back. I'm Atlantis Wolf, and I'm coming to you today from the Red Rocks of Sedona, Arizona, in the Coconino National Forest. I'm coming to you today to talk about silence. A lot of people think that silence is the absence of sound, but really, it's about going within. So when clients come to me, they're often looking for a connection to the spiritual realms, but they don't put it in those kind of words. And the bird is laughing at me as I say that. What they say is, I'm lost, I'm depressed, I have anxiety, I'm feeling overwhelmed, I don't know what to do, I don't know where to go, and I don't know where to start. So those things are indications to me that they are feeling disconnected from spirit, from ancestors, from the elements, from nature, from the earth, from all the available resources that are around them. And they want to know where to start. So I always say start by taking a walk. Put down everything else. Put down your phone, put down your music, put down everything else and go for a walk. Because when you go for a walk, you're going to move at the pace you're at, which might be a little too fast right now. It might be, I have to go and I have to do this and I have half an hour. But eventually, if you don't have your clock and you don't know where you're going and you don't have an agenda, you'll slow down to your natural pace. And in that natural pace, in that natural slowing, you'll begin to feel everything surrounding you the trees, and the air, and the ground, and the sky. And soon, even the spirits, your ancestors, your spirit guides, people that have passed away that you can't see in the physical world, and now only exist in the non-physical world. And you can bring that in any way that you want. So for me, when I want to fill myself up, I have to find silence, the silence of nature and the outdoors. I've just come out of a retreat and I went to a and b to even out in a rural area away from Sedona in a place called Cottonwood. And even there I woke up and it was too much. It was too much to be in a house and in a suburb and in a tight little piece of constructed humanity. So as fast as I could, I got out and I got all my stuff together. I got my drum. I'm debuting my new buffalo skin drum that I bought here from a drum maker in Sedona. It has a four directions tie. You could call it the iron cross, but I call it the four directions. Whatever you call it, there it is. And I came out to the desert. This is a big enough silence to hold me. There are parts of me, and maybe there's parts of you, that need a big silence. And this is a reminder. This much silence is inside of you and accessible at any time. So, I'm going to be drumming, which you may say, why would you be drumming in this beautiful silence? Drumming is about returning to the heartbeat. Inside your heart, there's a big, strong sound and a drum and a thrum and a movement and a circulation. When you're silent on the outside, you move in to the silence that's inside. Again, I'm going to define silence not as the absence of sound, but as the absence of external stimulation from other things other than nature. So that might sound a little complicated, so I'll put it this way. It's the absence of people, the absence of what you think you should do, where you think you need to be, what time it is, what day it is, how old you are, what you're doing or not doing. You could call it stillness or meditation. For me, it enc silence encompasses all of these things. 
So I'm going to drum for you on my new buffalo skin drum, which I'm quite fond of. And it called to me. I had a drum and it was in my uh, studio and it said, I want to go back. So I contacted the drum maker of that drum and I told him, your drum wants to come back, but there's a drum on your wall because he sells drums and there's a wall where he displays all of them for people to come and buy and rattles. And I said, there's a drum on your wall and it's brown and that's the one that's for me. And that's this one. So he agreed and we traded and I got to pick out a new mallet to go with the drum. So I picked out this mallet, which he also made and sand it down. And it's a little bit bigger than I would think, but it works really well. So the problem out in the desert is that the drum sounds like tin because it's so dry. He has a humidifier going all the time. So I'm bringing something to the table that may surprise people who don't have a drum or don't make drums. You can take water and put it on your drum. The drum is skin. It's skin and fat. He puts shea butter and bear fat on his drum and you can put it on the inside too. When we were doing ceremony for me to come into the ownership of this drum, uh, we went to the river out uh, north of Sedona and he actually dropped the drum face down into the river, which of course made me crazy because I just bought this very expensive drum because even in trade, this one was more than that one. And he said, it's fine because we're out in the desert. It's very dry. So it's okay for it to be wet because it's going to dry in just a few seconds. So I learned something and I'm passing it on to you because everything I learn, I'd like to pass on. So now listen. Drums are skin. Treat them like skin and they will sing to you. I'll see you on the other side. I'm going to give you another beautiful view right behind me and drum in a way that sets the intention for you to experience the silence inside of you. I'll see you on the other side. So move into this picture. What do you feel when you look into the red rocks of Sedona? What sacred spaces come to you? You may see something that looks familiar. Take a moment to set your own intention to find your own silence.
as you come back to who you are and where you are, try carrying the silence around you so that you can observe from within that silence. I'm Atlantis Wolf, and I believe in you.